Back on Sportsline, the Vanderbilt basketball team practicing right now during the middle of their summer session of school. Guys getting set, working on their games as well. So much to build on from last year. Bryce Drew's first season on campus came with a lot of excitement. You know, not to disparage anything that Kevin Stallings and his staff did at Vanderbilt, but sometimes, similar to maybe what Jeff Fisher and the Titans had, sometimes when you're just around a team for so long, the message gets stale. And after 17 years, I think you could say maybe that was the case with Kevin Stallings, whether it was the message to the fans or the message to players, to recruits, it just didn't seem to be working in the same way that it did earlier in his time there. And to bring in a guy like Bryce Drew and the fresh blood that comes with that, I think has been uh, very beneficial. It certainly was last year. He took that team. They battled through some injuries early. They just got better and better as the year went along. Played their best basketball late in the season in the SEC and got into the NCAA tournament and were a crazy foul at the end of the game by Matthew Fisher Davis away from advancing against Northwestern in the NCAA tournament. Just a really solid first year from Bryce Drew's team to get to that point and now you get a chance to see how they build off of that. They have a year and a half of recruiting under their belt, a, a class that will come in this year that's truly their guys to add into the pieces of that. And one of the really unique things that they get this summer is they get this foreign trip. You get an opportunity once every four years in college athletics to take your team and go on what is called a foreign tour. It's usually five or six or seven days. And you get to tour some other country or place. And while you're there, you get to compete a little bit. And so Vanderbilt's going to go to the U.S. Virgin Islands August 12th through the 19th. And they're going to be there. And over the course of six or seven days, they're going to play four or five basketball games while they're down there, as well as doing all the touring and sightseeing that they're going to do. A great opportunity for Bryce Drew to continue to bring these guys together and put his stamp on this program as they get set for next year and try to build off of that terrific first season. Riley Lachance, of course, a huge cog on this team. He is an upperclassman now. He's gone through the battles where he sort of burst onto the scene as an under-the-radar guy, and then with more expectations, struggled. Last year, he rebounded and played well under Bryce Drew's system, and now he heads into his senior year as one of the leaders on this team. We got a chance to catch up with Riley recently to talk about getting back on the court this summer and getting set to head to the U.S. Virgin Islands. Yeah, this is now. Yeah, I mean, we got a lot of uh, new, we only lose two guys from last year, but uh, at the same time, we got a lot of new guys. So, uh, you know, I think it's good um, to have not, you know, not much of a time. We have longer to go at once and, uh, you know, be able to do some more things and, and get some more time in. And uh, we're excited to go to the Virgin Islands in August. Yeah, have you made a trip like this before? No, I have not. I have not yet. This is my first time. No, this is my first time. So, what do you think you can gain by, I guess, having six days with the yeah, I mean it's going to be awesome. But not only one on the court, uh, all the practices leading up to it, it's it's going to, that's going to make us a lot better down the road. And um, but you know just being together for six days straight, players, coaches, everybody involved, um, it'll make us a lot closer, get to know each other a little bit more. Um, like I said, we got a lot of new guys, so it'll be good to mesh mesh the two groups together. Have you been out of the country before? I have not. No, personally, I have really? not. Yeah, so yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, so where in the Virgin Islands are you guys going? St. Thomas. St. Thomas. Thomas yeah. So yeah, we're excited. Yeah, that, that should be a, a good experience for you guys. Yeah. Have you, have you ever been to like Bahamas? No, like no, this is this is the first time for I think almost all of our guys. So uh, we're really excited and uh, get to be able to play against some other teams too. So some good competition will be fun. With, with it starting so early, is, is this, are you like, yeah, you know, like yeah. you through the summer or are you more looking forward to I mean, it's only 10 practices that we get before, and uh, I think being able to go to uh, St. Thomas and play is just a huge uh, opportunity. It's a huge privilege, so uh, we're excited for that. And, you know, I think a couple of us who've been through it the whole time, uh, a couple of times, uh, you know, summers like this where, like, you know, we got three seniors and, you know, it's our last year, so we're excited to make the most of it. Riley LeChan certainly looking to make the most of his final season at Vanderbilt. So again, so much excitement to build off of what they did last year. Speaking of excitement, the Wimbledon run of Roger Federer 
just makes you shake your head. This guy's 35 years old. No one had ever won Wimbledon at that age before. He turns 36 in three weeks, by the way. He won it without dropping a set. No one had done that since 1976. He won his 19th Grand Slam. No one's ever done that before. He won his eighth Wimbledon title. No one's ever done that before. What he's doing at this tender age of 35 is simply remarkable. He is arguably playing the best ten of his, of his career right now. And he's played his entire career in the era of the Big Four with Djokovic and Murray and Nadal as well. He dominated. And then he battled all those guys and then he had some injury phases and some struggles and he keeps going and now those guys are injured and struggling and here's Federer healthy and ready to go and winning again Australian Open and Wimbledon in one year and he didn't play the French that's the only one he didn't win here's Roger Federer discussing his eighth Wimbledon and 19th Grand Slam title I figured there was a chance, you know, maybe this year um, because I was healthy. I had the most amazing start with, you know, the beginning of the year winning Australia and Indian Wells in Miami. So I, I was hoping that things were going to play out nicely, that I was going to be in contention in the second week at Wimbledon. To win it all together, it's like the dream scenario that you hope happens, but you're so cautious that, you know, yeah, maybe you see yourself with the trophy, but you don't, never really want to go there mentally. Yesterday was the first time the twin boys saw you win a Grand Slam title. They were courtside. When you saw them for the first time after the match, what did they, what did they say to you? Um, it was right over here and they told me to come up the stairs. There's a lot of people and I have to come say hello to everybody. And, uh, um, well, because I, the unfortunate bit is I couldn't carry the trophy all the way there. So they actually never got to see the trophy. They took it away from me and then they bring it back and it goes again and it comes back. So if I would have had the trophy, they, it would have been all about the trophy. But uh, other than that, I think they were just happy to see me and I was just happy to see them again because I actually hadn't seen them all day because uh, they left the house so I could, you know, prepare in peace, I guess, for, for the finals. Obviously a very busy day because after that you had to go to the champions dinner. Right. How did that go and uh, what was on the menu? It was fish. I wonder what fish it was. I, I don't remember now. Maybe cod, I think. Uh, and then there was a, a nice uh, a chocolate cake um, afterwards, which was great. It's with chocolate? I hope it was. <laughs> Tasted good. A lot of calories. It was good because I hadn't eaten all day. So uh, no, it was nice there. Uh, spending some time with Garbine Muguruza, who I was very happy for. It's a special moment in in someone's career, and even though this is my eighth time at the Champions Dinner, I I still enjoyed myself. I was just a bit disappointed. I arrived as late as I did because I had to do almost two and a half hours of press after the match at one stage. And we thank you for that. Um, 19 overall, as of course you know, U.S. Open coming up. How about getting number 20 this year in New York? Yeah, that, that, I mean, that would be a joke if I won three slams this year, out of nowhere, really. Um, after not playing two out of four last year and before that not winning for four years, any slams, um, that's, I, I don't think that far ahead, honestly. Uh, I know if I stay in shape, um, there are chances for me to do well at the US Open, but to win it, at some stage I almost feel like I have to be realistic that uh, I am not 25 anymore. I'm not sure if I can win three slams in one year, but uh, winning two is already pretty crazy and uh, good, plenty good enough for me, but I'll definitely try to get myself organized and prepared and ready so I, I will have the best chance to do well at the US Open.